Great. Welcome, everyone, to the Torsional Art Community Meeting for April. Uh, this is the agenda for today. We'll go over our monthly stats. Then Anush will give us some updates on the work he, his team has been doing on Lama and Stable Diffusion. I will talk about custom app support, which we now have a, a nice uh, story for in Torsional IR. Uh, basically, the Python API has been updated. And lastly, we'll go through our routine health checkup. Um, so uh, before that, um, if you're new here, make sure to join the community. So every the first Monday of every month, we have our community meeting at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And that's for broad uh, major updates that have happened in Torchmill IR. All other Mondays, we have our developer hour at the same time. And it's more for technical discussions, a great place to come and ask questions or bring up new ideas for features that you would like to see in Torchmill IR. And every Thursday, we also have uh, office hours, which is hosted by me from 8.30 to 9.30 AM Pacific time. And this is meant uh, for a you know, lower level debugging help or uh, more entry level questions about Torch MLIR or MLIR as a whole. We do have a Discord, which is the best place to stay up to date on things going on in Torch MLIR. So make sure you join that. And there is also a discourse for this. These are some statistics of the last month. So we had 38 commits in total uh, from uh, a nice variety of contributors. So thank you, everyone, who has been working on all the changes to Torchmal IR. And this is just a brief glance of some of the work that has taken place. So new ops uh, being added to one of the three backends and also improved ops. And I will now hand it off to Anush to give us some updates. Thanks, uh, <clears throat> thanks, Amiro. So uh, I think um, just wanted to kind of uh, uh, highlight the uh, generative AI workloads that we've been increasingly increasingly seeing. Um, so we have Llama lowering complete. Uh, there are some complex types that we are, uh, that we have to add that Prashant uh, from our team is continuing to add. And, um, and then uh, stable diffusion training and fine tuning is functional. Uh, there is uh, something called LoRa. I think we talked about it briefly, um, low rank adaptation, where you can uh, preserve the weights of the original model and do uh, fine tuning with a, a update, uh, which is very small. That's kind of like the new craze with um, um, uh, with stable diffusion. Uh, well, uh, it was a few weeks old, a month old, but uh, it's not. Uh, it, you know, for fine tuning, LoRa is important. So uh, I think we have that, and um, we just need a couple ops uh, that Vivek is uh, upstreaming. I think they're con backward, and and there's a split op or something. There are a couple ops that need to be done. Uh, but once those two ops land, then in Shark we'll have. Um, Training on the edge also enabled. Um, so on your single GPU, you could you could take uh, ten images of whatever you want um, and update the stable diffusion model with those ten images, and then you could always invoke that um, you know style or, or or that art with a keyword, and you can give some weightage to that, and um, it'll it'll bring that as part of your image generation. Uh, so you can create artistic styles based on your own um, um, styles, your own photographs, um, or uh, locations you like, et cetera. Um, so that's a very um, um, exciting workload. Um, and um, and it's also it's a, it's a smaller um, update to the original model. So it's only the order of like 30, 40 megs um, compared to a 6 GB download for the original um, stable diffusion model. Uh, so that's uh, that's functional, and, and and all of this work we're doing uh, upstream first. So everything goes into TorchML IR, and so anyone using TorchML IR is going to benefit from all of this work. And if there's any questions, feel free to ping us on TorchML IR Discord, and we're happy to help. Um, the next one we're adding is called uh, Tumi or Tome. Uh, basically, it's token merging. Uh, that's the new um, new hotness, uh, uh, like a week old or something like that. Um, but basically, uh, token merging is supposed to reduce the number of uh, iterations required, um, the number of steps required for generating a similar image. 
Um, and I think there's like a scatter, uh, you know, two or three ops that we need to implement and uh, it's tracked in that bug 1989. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll you know, we'll have those. I think one of that, uh, one of those bugs was already implemented or half implemented in the past. So hopefully it's easy to implement, but with this, um, we should have the ability to, uh, you know, roll in token merging uh, into, you know, Tosham layer and downstream into ED Shark. Um, and then the next big thing I think um, is that we're um, pushing on getting Llama 8-bit, 4-bit, and 3-bit. We could do 2-bit also, doesn't really matter. GPTQ-based quantization. So uh, if you're tracking LLMs, this is kind of like the new enabler. Uh, GPTQ is the new enabler uh, for running large models on um, not constrained, but smaller devices like one GPU, two GPUs, um, uh, something like that. Um, but um, we uh, we have the um, I think custom ops has already landed, and we just need to enable um, end-to-end lowerings for these uh, models. And then you should be able to use anyone using Touchum layer should be able to use Llama, um, you know, eight bit, four bit, or three bit. However, you map the back end to your back end uh, should work but we'll we'll verify that through the uh, linear pipeline cool. i was going to ask i think there's a typo on the very last it's enabled by custom ops right the oh oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it is enabled but yeah exactly sorry that's <laughs> cool. uh, yeah that's true awesome this is this is really cool work uh, I don't know if people have any questions or anything about this. Cool. In that case, I'll move on to the custom ops. So, yeah, as I mentioned, the API uh, has now changed. Uh, oh, and shout out to uh, Max from Nod, who really helped in getting this across the finish line. Um, but yeah, so this is basically the new interface uh, for users. There's this new keyword argument in torchmlayer.compile where people can specify their abstract interpretation functions for their custom ops. Now you might be wondering what are abstract interpretation functions. So this are this is the name we gave to functions in torchmlayer that are used to calculate the shape uh, and the type of the outputs of an op, as well as whether the op has value semantics or not. Um, so at the Python level, what the user will have to uh, write looks roughly like this. So suppose we have an op in our you know, custom na namespace Goofy that is just an identity operation. The user is then expected to write these three functions, so the shape, the type, and has value semantics function. Um, the, each of the functions has a very particular format. Uh, that is expected for them. Uh, so in the case of the shape functions, each tensor argument is expected to turn into a list of ints, where the list of ints represents the shape of the tensor argument. So in our case, the identity shape function is very simple. We take an input tensor and then we just return that shape of the tensor and that's the final shape. Uh, for detail functions, the format is you take a tuple of two ints, the first int representing a rank, the second int representing a, date, a date type. Um, and in this particular case, it's also very simple. We simply return the date type of the input tensor. The has value semantics function is expected to return nothing. It's really just more of a tag than anything. Uh, and internally, we simply use it when we're converting ops into value semantics to verify if the op uh, allows value semantics or not. Uh, so there's no abstract interpretation happening for that function, but for the other two, there is, as we'll see in a moment. And then you just pass those functions in a list as the extra library. Um, and if you have multiple ops, you would have to pass three functions for each of those ops. Uh, and the order doesn't really matter as long as you have the three functions. Uh, now, we do expect a very particular format for things to work. So how do you know if you have the right format? Uh, if you don't put in the right format, uh, torsionmlr.compile uh, will actually give you a nicer message telling you 
the expected format. So uh, we actually we use the PyTorch registry to verify that uh, your signature matches what we expect. So in this case, for the identity operation, this is how you would register it in PyTorch. This would be the signature. It goes from a tensor to a tensor. If I typed in the wrong shape function, uh, you know, a shape function that doesn't take any arguments, this would be the output of torsionlir that compile. It would tell me, OK, you gave me this, but this is the right signature. So this is a very simple way of getting the right signature for, uh, for the functions. Now, I'll dive into a little bit of what's going on under the hood when we're using these functions. So um, again, we have our goofy identity operator. And when you pass your functions to torsionlir.compile, you get turned into MLIR snippets. Uh, and this is what they look like. It's essentially the same as the Python version, just in MLIR. So our shape function takes a list of ints, returns a list of ints. Um, our data function returns the second element from the tuple, and the has value semantics function doesn't do anything. Um, and the shape and detail function actually follow a very similar path in TorchMLIR when it comes to the abstract interpretation. So I'm just going to focus on the shape function for now, but the detail function uh, does essentially the same thing. So if we have a very simple program uh, that you know simply calls our custom up, what's going to happen is uh, for the shape function, there's going to be this pass called reify shape calculations that will turn uh, the MLIR forward function into something like this. So first, the shape function uh, snippet gets imported into our module so that we can then use it to make the actual computation. And then in the body of the forward method, every op will get wrapped into this torch.shape.calculate operation. This operation has two regions. The first region is used to keep track of the operation we're analyzing. So in this case, it's our identity op. And the second region keeps track of the actual shape computation. So here you, we see we have a call to the actual shape function. And the goal of, the, uh, of this set of passes is to simplify this second region as much as possible until we have, as a yield value, an actual list of constant integer values. And if we have a list of constant integer values, then we can actually update the types with the right final shape. So after we run the simplify shape calculations pass, things look like this now. And as we can see, the actual shape calculation got simplified enough where it's just a list of constant integers. In this case, you know, a list of integers three and four. Um, and because we were able to simplify fully, this pass will also update the types. So now goofy.identity returns the tensor with a shape three, four. Um, and then we drop all of those towards dot shape dot calculate operations. And now we're back to you know the original function we had, but we now have all the shape information. And the dtype functions do the similar thing. So once you do the dtype pipeline, this unknown dtype that we see here will get converted to the right uh, dtype for our function. Um, you can find more information on this uh, in the following links. So we have you know an example Python script in TorchMLIR for how to actually register your op uh, in PyTorch at the Python level, which is quite convenient. There's also the design doc for the abstract interpretation library that is very useful. Um, and something that I wanted to point out as well is that all ops in TorchMLIR actually use this abstract interpretation approach. It's not just for custom ops. So every normal Torch op, we do have a shape and detail function uh, for those as well. Uh, so it's all going through the same. It's all being treated the same way. Um, yeah, and that's sort of a high level overview of the custom of support. Do people have any questions? You might have been a lot of MLIR being shown at once. Um,
Cool. Um, yeah, well, I can't wait to see how people start using this feature. So this is, uh, I do, I should cl clarify, this is only to get your custom up to the backing contract. So uh, from the backing contract, you then have to identify this torch that operator with your custom up and handle it, uh, you know, in whatever way you need to handle it for your backend compiler. Uh, so yeah, this will only take care of the first part of Torchimal IR, where we get to the backing contract part of it. Cool. Um, and now our, you know, monthly checkup. How is the PR experience? Debugging issues, navigation issues. Um, if you have any feedback, feel free to bring it up right now. Or you can also um, open up a GitHub issue if something comes up comes up later on. Um, do people have any any concerns or questions? Perfect. Um, yeah, and I'll open it up for any discussions or questions people might have. You can ask about things we presented or questions you might have for your own projects. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming to the meeting uh, and have a good rest of your Monday. Thanks, everyone.